I had my hand at hunting with some family in Idaho for the first time years back when we were attacked by these giant hairy ape things that threw rocks at us. I had never been to an area that we went before and were hoping to possibly out hunt each other. I went into a deeper area of the woods than my cousins did and that's when we started to notice things around us changing. First, it was what I can describe as markers. I'm talking about uprooted trees, bent, twisted, and curved in arches or just ripped off in the middle in certain spots. We really weren't sure what to make of it, but then the feeling of the woods itself had changed. It went from peaceful to dreadful. That was all before we started to notice a weird thudding sound, following rocks being tossed and thrown in our direction. Before thinking there were other hunters in the area, trying to play cruel tricks on us and boot us out as we were descended upon by these large, hairy ape creatures from the trees. Look, I know we've all heard of Bigfoot before, but something in my gut tells me that Bigfoot doesn't have wings and tries to swoop down at you. I've heard stories from other hunters in the town that I grew up in with encounters of large, upright walking apes or hairy beings that lived deep in the thicket. I never really believed in them, but to have an experience like this is something else. Were these Bigfoot that we encountered? They had large black wings, and their faces kind of resembled that of Alf. A short snout, ugly mother effers, sunken in black eyes, covered from head to toe in long black hair. Needless to say, we retreated from the area as these creatures pelted us with small rocks. And before you respond back to this email, asking me a million questions, I'll answer it all quickly for you. I don't know. I don't know why they were there, what they were, and were they Bigfoot? I have no answers. We didn't ask. We retreated and left it as just that, that we must have accidentally invaded some unknown animal's territory. I feel like that's really the only way to sum it all up, because if I spent too much time dwelling on it and all the what ifs, I would go crazy. I wanted to send you this because you might know what it is that we ran into in that neck of the woods. You seem to be knowledgeable and an expert on all these monsters and whatnot. I used to live in Eastern Washington State where I raised goats for a living. I'm apprehensive to tell you what I'm going to tell you because you might think I'm crazy. In fact, I know many will think I'm crazy but there is truth to my story. I'm even debating finishing this and sending it, but it's probably for the best. One time in the evening, I saw some sort of unidentified thing grab my goat out of the sky and carry off with it. Now, I know it sounds ridiculous, but not even I could rationalize what I had seen. This huge hairy bat-like winged creature descended down from the trees nearby and grabbed my goat with these large like ape hands and what looked to be huge hairy arms and flew off over into the other area of trees. I didn't have my rifle on me, so in trying to shoot it out of the sky wasn't an option in the moment. It happened so fast I didn't even have time to process what it was I was witnessing. Our back area is surrounded by older woods and whatever this creature was came from that general area. I had grabbed my rifle after it took my goat and pursued it a couple of miles into the backwooded area, but never found a thing. No trace or sign that there was anything out of place. I don't know what it was, and I don't know what took my goat. I know bats don't get that big, but this thing had long legs and arms like it might walk upright, or best I can describe as kind of monkey or apish. I only saw it briefly, but I know damn well that nothing is supposed to look like that with large bat wings. Is it possible that Washington State is home to large carnivorous bats that inhabit the forests? I've asked around in my circle of friends of large bats in the state, and nobody I know knows what on earth I'm talking about. I haven't had any issues with anything in the like since this has occurred. I keep my goats much closer to my home now, and I don't let them wander off near as far for fear that more of these beings will come and take my goats. I just wish there were more people that had these types of experiences. I feel alone, being the only one I've ever heard of dealing with this kind of creature.
This email ended up much longer than what I had hoped for, so sit back and buckle up and enjoy what I have to tell you, because it wasn't enjoyable for me to experience. Anyway, when I went camping with a couple of friends a few summers back, I believe I experienced a Bigfoot, but I know that Bigfoots don't fly and have wings, so I'm not exactly sure what this falls under. I'm aware of Bigfoot's existence, and my family has had a few run-ins with them here and there. I didn't necessarily have a personal run-in with one of these things, but I did hear a sound that I would want to believe is a Bigfoot, but maybe not. I think it was more shocking for my friend, who apparently encountered this thing, and being a non-believer. That changed that night, for sure. We went camping, up around Mount St. Helens for the weekend, to party a little bit, and to let loose. Our day-to-day jobs and life, in general, was just getting too stressful, so we needed a good getaway. The camping trip turned out normal for the most part, until nightfall. We were all getting ready to crack open some beers when we heard this earth-shattering scream off to the east of us in the timber. We all looked confused and unsure of what we had just heard. We started talking that it kind of sounded like a really large bat, but we were unsure. It creeped us out, but we quickly forgot about it and had some fun hanging out by the fire and drinking some good beer. Washington State, for those of you that don't know, is home to some great microbrews, so we were enjoying trying all different kinds. The night went on fairly peacefully, and we were getting ready to retire to our tents to get some sleep. My buddies went in their tents after taking a piss and brushing their teeth, and I retired to mine. I wasn't quite ready for bed yet. I hadn't drank enough to shut my brain down, so I thought I would sit on my phone for a little while in my sleeping bag. I was lying there on my phone, dinking around on some games. I don't think it was long before I had heard some of my buddies snoring in their tent. I guess that's what happens when you drink too much. I like to stay on the conservative side of drinking so I can actually enjoy myself, but to each their own. After listening to my friends snore, I realized there was no cricket sounds like there was earlier. The night was completely silent, except for loud snoring. I began listening closely, and I could not hear any life outside. No crickets, no sounds, no wind even. That was odd to me, but I didn't think anything about it. I checked my phone, and it was around 11.49 p.m. Hoping I could fall asleep soon, boom! I heard this massive thundering crashing sound from not far away. It shot me right up from my sleeping bag. I turned on my phone's flashlight, quickly looking around beyond my tent to see if I could spot anything. It was dark and there was nothing. The woods were still, dead and quiet. The only light was the dull, dead glowing embers off the fire that we had had earlier. It straight up sounded like a boulder or something falling out of the sky and crashing into a tree. It was so loud. So I was starting to freak out. I sat there for a moment with my phone's flashlight just shining out towards the darkness, as if expecting to see something in the three or so light of feet that I had. Maybe in hindsight, I was just waiting for peace and quiet to feel reassured. That's when I heard that bone-chilling scream again. It sounded like a very loud, deep bat, kind of. That's the closest I can think of something that would match its timbre and tone. It too was incredibly loud. I could feel the vibrations from it in my chest. My friend who was once snoring away is shouting my name in a hushed whisper. I'm trying to call out to him and ask if he had heard what I had just heard. He says yeah, that it woke him up. What in God's name is that? Some sort of dying animal? I told him I had no idea, but it's freaking me out and I don't have any desire to go and find out. But I did have one problem. I had to piss like a horse before a race, and I had zero bottles in my tent, or otherwise I would have just pissed in it and called it good. My good friend, bless his heart, likes to think he's brave, but a lot of the time, I think he's just a dumbass. Little did I know, he's like, I'm pissed. I was having a dream about my ex, and that stupid screeching woke me up. Let's go show it who's boss. I brought my 45 with me, 
and it's got a bullet that's looking to kill. I told him you're crazy for going out there in the middle of the night without much light at all and looking for the source of unknown noise. I think he was still partially intoxicated. I'm not sure. I, on the other hand, was 100% sober before I even went to bed, as I like to drink beer for enjoyment and don't care for being drunk. While there was a pause in conversation, I thought maybe if I went out there a little with him, it might be a good chance for me to go piss on a tree or something. My other two buddies who remained asleep during this somehow were still snoring away. They brought some hard liquor and were passed out. I don't even think that Mount St. Helens erupting a second time would have woken those two up. I really didn't want to go out there into the darkness, but I needed a pee, and someone had to accompany my idiot friend who thought he was going to play hero, so I felt obligated. I stood up out of my tent and was met with him outreaching his hand to pull me out of the tent. I had told him I didn't need help getting out. I was just fine. He kind of laughed, thinking I was drunk or something. He too had his flashlight in his hand and his big 45, aka hand cannon in the other. I told him, geez, do you really need to bring that bazooka out here? Wouldn't a handgun been enough? He looked down at his weapon and explained a handgun ain't gonna stop a bear. This will. I should have reasoned with him more to not bring such an overpowered weapon to a simple camping trip, but this man practices his shooting almost daily and is an incredibly good shot. He might have had his moments of stupidity, but he knew what he was doing, especially when handling extremely powerful and dangerous weapons. I think he might have gotten a little too cocky, as I recall asking him if he's too intoxicated to be handling a firearm. He told me he was fine, to which I just responded, whatever. The woods were still silent, and I pointed him to the tree that I was going to piss on, probably about 20 feet away from his tent. He nods and points in the direction of the sound we heard earlier, saying, I'm gonna go that way and see what I can find. If it really was a boulder falling out of the sky, we would probably see it. I stumble over to the tree with just my phone flashlight as I hear my friend quietly walking over off into the darkness. I pull it out and begin to mark this tree as my own. Don't think I was brave, I was paranoid as hell looking around. I hadn't heard a noise like that and I was very, very spooked. My friend seemed very blinded by bravery, thinking that because he had a flashlight and a magnum, he was indestructible. He trails off into the trees, enough to where I can't see him as much. He keeps stopping and looking around frantically, but it doesn't look like he's finding much of anything. I zip my pants back up and head back for my tent. When I go to get into my tent, I just get this incredible feeling of guilt that I should go and grab my friend and bring him back to his tent. I'm sure he's still partially intoxicated. As a friend, it's my duty to ensure he's not doing stupid stuff, especially with a high-powered weapon. I remember cursing his name because I didn't want to walk out 100 feet with a dinky flashlight on my phone to grab his stubborn ass, but my stupid consciousness wouldn't just let me go and crash out like I wanted. Regretfully, I just started walking over towards him, calling his name out and asking if he had found anything. He wasn't responding. After maybe a minute or two, or three of walking through the trees, I walk up next to him as he's intently shining his flashlight around up in the trees looking for any signs that point to a source of the crashing noise. I asked him if he had seen anything yet, and he just looks at me, puts his finger to his lips in a shushing motion. I'm curious too now. We're both looking around. Nothing. The woods are still dead silent though, and it's pretty spooky. He's shining his light all around, but nothing. We're not seeing a damn thing. Neither of us could really shake the intense feelings of being watched, so much so that it was overwhelming. I motioned for him to just give up and turn around. Let's head back to the tent, since there is clearly nothing out here to see. He wouldn't budge. He just kept looking up in the trees and all around us. It was almost like he was in a trance. It was bizarre. After a minute or two of trying to get him to just come back to the tent and go to sleep, 
I said screw it and walked back myself. Literally, I'm three feet from the tent and about to unzip to get in, and I hear him scream bloody murder. Boom! He fires a shot, and then I hear the most screeching loud roar I've ever heard in my life. It was kind of like if you took a lion's roar and combined it with a bat and put it through one of those massive loudspeakers you'd see at a big amphitheater. My stomach at that very moment sank to the bottom of my feet. He comes sprinting back in my direction, and I'm screaming, what the hell happened? In one solid motion, he runs towards me and leaps around me into the truck, grabs his keys, and starts it up. Now I'm freaking out, chasing after him, hopping in the truck, yelling at him, are you crazy what's going on? You can't just leave our other two buddies here. He puts it in drive and floors it out of the area. He's just gunning his truck as hard as he can, flooring it on primitive roads and gravel, and I'm trying to calm him down and get him to stop, but he wouldn't even acknowledge me. I'm screaming at him that he has to go back. You have to go back and grab our friends and all of our stuff. He turns to me and screams a few choice words that I won't repeat. I don't know how long this went on for until he made it to a more paved road area. We had been in the car for a minute at this point. I couldn't give you an exact estimate of time, but he just stops the car, puts it in park, eyes wide and trembling, gripping the steering wheel so tightly I thought he was going to tear it off. With how fast he was going through all that gravel and brush, I'm surprised he did not total the truck or bust an axle. I'm still freaking out at him, screaming what is going on. We have to go back. What are you doing? Are you crazy? He finally turns to me and says quietly, and I'll never forget this moment. You couldn't pay me enough to go back there and face that thing. I'm scared. I'm terrified. I have no idea what is going on and what the hell he's talking about. I want you to understand that this is two grown men in our shirts and boxers. He still has his 45 in one hand, and his other hand is gripping the steering wheel. I thought he was on the verge of a mental breakdown. I had never seen him like this. We're sitting in his truck in the middle of nowhere in the night, on an older paved road, out in God knows where. He literally just drove through half gravel, half forced, and I'm trying to process what the hell had just happened. He all of a sudden opens his driver's side door and just bolts off into the night. Here I am screaming at him, screaming his name. Where are you going? Come back. I am screaming and yelling, and nothing. Listen, I know this might sound totally outlandish, but I swear this is what happened. The truck is still running, and now I'm freaking out, because I don't know what the hell to do. All my stuff is back in my tent, so there's nothing I can do. After sitting for a minute, I realize the only thing I can do is try to look for him. So I hop over into the driver's side and start to drive up and down this road, looking for him, calling his name in the direction that he ran. But he's nowhere to be found. I sure as hell was not going to go out and trek in the middle of the woods and just my boxers. I'm on the verge of a breakdown myself. I don't know what was going on. We just went from hanging out and having a great time to him seeing something hearing a roar, firing a shot, and running like a maniac into the truck and flipping out. I had no explanation for the scream we had heard either. At this point in the night, that was the last thing I was thinking about. After driving back and forth, I was just going to try and go back to our campsite and grab everything and my friends, tell them what happened, and call a ranger to come help us. This was far too much for me to handle. Turns out that my friend was driving so hard through the brush and off the beaten road, he did damage his axle slightly. Luckily, we weren't far off from where we were camping, and without totally breaking down, I was able to make it back to where our camp spot was. Both of my friends were outside, freaking the hell out, wanting to know where we went. I explained the story to them, that my friend, which, by the way, if you haven't noticed, I have purposefully not been naming any of their names out of protection for their identity. He saw something off in the woods, heard something, ran into his truck, bolted off into the night, and went crazy. In a blur of a frenzy, we just threw everything in the bed of the truck and got out of there so fast to go looking for our friend. 
I don't think I've ever in my life packed up camp so quickly, but we somehow managed to pull it off. We jumped back in his truck and took off towards the main road we were just at prior. I don't recall a moment of calm or relaxation at all during this entire tenure. It was stress, worry, anxiety, every negative emotion you can muster into a few hour time span. So much so that I kind of blacked a lot of it out, to be honest. We get back to the road and get out of the truck and start calling and yelling for him, but we don't hear from him. I think we drove the next couple of hours around looking for him until we decided to give up and get a ranger to come help us like I wanted to originally. I could bore you with more drawn out details of our failed search for our friend, driving around all night and calling for him with little to no sleep, stress and worry about what we all endured the night prior, but I'll spare you those. Fast forward to hours later and we were able to get a hold of a park ranger. We explained the situation, only mentioning that our friend went crazy, was armed and took off into the woods in the middle of the night. We had been searching for him for hours and never found him. Moving forward again, we eventually found him in the early morning hours, just as the sun was coming out, about three miles or so where he originally ran off at. When they found him, he was in a state of shock, panic, and acting as this man had completely lost it. Huddled up against the base of a tree, whispering nonsense to himself and holding his gun and rocking back and forth. He was transferred to a hospital but was released the following day because he checked out just fine, because he might have experienced a total emotional and mental breakdown. He had gone through a complete psyche eval, but improved his condition within the time there. When prodded with questions and trying to find out what was going on, he just kept talking about a giant bat. I know, confusing. Nobody could really get more information out of him at the time. Skip ahead again, about a month later, and none of us had really talked to him. We all just kind of thought he lost it and went off the deep end for a while. Well, when I finally got the chance to have a real conversation with the man again, I wanted to know what happened. I needed to have some closure on the events that night. I feel like for the first time, he was really able to tell me what he experienced and said that it forever altered his life. He said when I had left, off to a pocket of trees he somehow missed with his light was what he explained to be something from hell. I asked him what he meant by something from hell. He shrugged and wouldn't even look at me. I'll never forget his tenseness and demeanor changed almost instantaneously, so much so that I could see his skin crawl from five feet away. I begged him to elaborate, saying that it resembled this nasty, humongous, hairy bat he just said it was a demon that he knew was going to come for him and take him away. He said it was watching him intently and he knew that it meant nothing but harm. He fired a shot at it and it flew off in his direction. He explained that whatever this thing was had massive teeth, claws, and was enormous in size, bigger and taller than him, had glowing red eyes that pierced into his soul and even said that he felt like it was trying to talk to him telepathically to tell him how it was going to get him. Once he fired that shot at it, he swears he hit it, but it flew off in his direction, which is why he ran. How or why it didn't grab him, he has no idea. At the moment, I consider this to be the ramblings of a possible schizophrenic having a hallucination. I hate to be that way, but what he was explaining to me was just so far removed from any reality I knew and lived in. The only problem here is that I too heard the howl, that scream, whatever he was talking about. It was loud, and it didn't sound like any animal I had ever heard of. I really don't have a way to explain what it was, but it did sound somewhat like a raspy deep bat. I'm not exactly sure, but I can tell you it terrified me in that moment that it occurred. I have no way to explain it. I don't know how to justify what happened, but he truly believes that what he saw is what he saw and it was real. And what he saw is the thing that made the sound. We actually didn't spend a whole lot of time on the subject because I can tell that it really shook him up bad, which again, to me was very odd. This was a guy who would do extreme things and was never bothered by much. If someone like him reacts this way, 
it just kind of told me there really was something there. I mean, I know he's not totally insane. We both heard the screams. As for my other two friends that attended the trip, they didn't hear a damn thing. They were only awakened by all the commotion of us taking off the first time. They didn't see anything. I wish I had more to tell you, something concrete and conclusive, but I don't. Just that what we experienced, we can't explain. Whatever my friend went through shook him so badly that I hadn't been able to do anything in the outdoors with him since, and it's kind of just changed his personality. I'm still not sure how I feel about all of it. I guess I'm still skeptical, but my mind just keeps going back to that horrid sounding scream. Maybe there is truth to what he said. Maybe there is such a thing as hell, and this is where that thing came from. I don't normally give thought to things that are outside of my reality, but maybe it's time I start. Sorry for the long story, just wanted you to hear my experience.